Hello everyone, so today I'll tell you about one of the best sci-fi fantasy authors you've probably never heard of. So last winter, Swedish author Karin Tidbeck was in town and she visited an independent bookstore slash cafe here in Numeo. Uh, Tidbeck was there to talk about and promote the new book, The Memory Theater. Now I had discovered her quite recently and I find it a bit weird that you know, Swedish media hadn't picked up on the fact that a Swedish author appeared on the New York Times list of the top 10 sci-fi fantasy books uh, of the year of 2021. I had discovered uh, Tidbeck uh, a few months earlier uh, through a sci-fi fantasy focused book club me and a few colleagues started uh, at work. Uh, and in that book club we read her debut novel Amatka this one and I was immediately hooked and I then went on to read all their other published work which I did in short order as uh, to date Tidbeck has have only released two novels both are rather short uh, and also a short story collection and well actually I think she has released two short story collections but the first one I haven't been able to get a hold of I don't know, maybe it's out of print or I just haven't been looking closely enough. Anyway, I also learned that Tid Beck had connections to Jeff and Ann Vandermeer, having attended one of their writing classes or writing workshops or whatever it's called. Anyway, that really piqued my in interest even further because uh, Jeff Vandermeer's Annihilation is uh, it's on top of, the, of my list of favorite sci-fi books of all time. A position it shares with Alistair Reynolds' Absolution Gap. And I have a sneaking suspicion I'll do some videos on both of those in the future. Anyway, so once again, Amatka. It's a brilliant story. And it is, well, as I said, rather short. I would say ref refreshingly short. Uh, it's about 200 pages. Uh, the writing never feels rushed. Still, uh, feedback managed to fill it, it's jam-packed with interesting character, character arcs, plot, themes, ideas. It leaves um, a lot of questions unanswered, which, once again, I really appreciate. Uh, Amatka takes place in... Well, that's a part of the mystery. Um, is it another planet, another dimension? Is it a far, far future, near future? An alternate reality? Uh, I managed to build a theory uh, based on the pieces of the puzzle that I managed to pick up uh, and Tidbeck touched on this question in their talk and even though I, w I wasn't spot on but I, I was close enough to pat myself on the, on the back feeling a bit clever for once. Uh, so anyway, the setting is it's bleak, it's harsh, it's, it's dystopian. I, I would say it's a... Uh, what we're dealing with here is a, it's kind of a failed attempt to build a utopia. I get some DDR vibes for sure. There are also some conspiracies and underground resistance, but we only get a hint of that as our main character is always a few steps behind. She almost get get there, almost start to see the, the, the big picture. But, it's, but the truth is also it's always slightly beyond her reach while the overarching plot you know, just progresses as she and with her us readers observe. And what really makes the world stand out is that all all items in the world need to be clearly labeled and clearly conceptualized in people's mind, else the thing in question will dissolve into a grey slush. Uh, so we have this weird sign setting, we have influences of both I don't know, Orwell and Kafka to go to the most obvious, though not necessarily most accurate references. Uh, yeah, so a uh, tremendous book, just awesome. Uh, also want to mention then her other published work. She has a short story collection called Jagannath. Um, and then we have the latest novel, The Memory Theater. And those, the, the short story collection and The Memory Theater are more... Uh, I want to say low fantasy because it kind of takes place in our world or in worlds very adjacent to ours. Um, so rather low fantasy than sci-fi, but I mean, let's not get stuck on, on, on labels uh, here. Uh, and I believe the short stories 
many, if not all, take place in the same general universe, same general, general setting as the memory theater. And there is at least one short story that uh, I definitely view as a prologue to the to the memory theater. So if you have the opportunity, um, I would say read the short story collection before you read memory theater. But it's it's not a must. You don't have to do it. It just adds um, a little bit more if you do that. Um, the short stories all. Well, short, of course, also, but same thing here. They're, they're just jam-packed with with different ideas, moods, aesthetics. Um, um, it, it's great. Um, most, if not all, takes place in Sweden, which makes for a refreshing change of scenery com compared to a lot of the Anglo-American-centric sci-fi fantasy we, we usually read. And, yeah, the memory theater, then, the... the her latest novel uh, starts in a world adjacent to ours where time stands still and we have a character that becomes aware of the concept of time and from there the story kind of meanders and eventually brings it to to our world though not not in our time so anyway Tidbeck hasn't written that much and what she has, has written so far is, is quite short but boy oh boy do they make up for that by just pure quality so certainly quality over quantity uh, when it comes to, to Karin, Karin Tidbeck. Uh, I quickly became a bit of a fanboy, which brings me to that winter night at the book cafe, cafe up here in northern Sweden. Uh, so I hadn't, I hadn't slept very well, maybe not at all. Uh, our youngest uh, spent most of the night screaming and not wanting to go to sleep at all. Uh, in combination with a hectic work day, of course, I got one of my patented migraine attacks. So I took my medication, which got rid of most of the headache, fortunately, but, you know, it messes up my head a little bit more. I'm, you know, I get a bit slow from that medication. Mm, so, yeah, after work, I should have gone home to get some sleep. That's what I should have done. But I'd become a fanboy. I didn't want to miss uh, uh, listening to, to Tidbeck talk about her book. Uh, so, anyway, that's, that was my state of mind as I, after... The talk which was really good she's really entertaining to to listen to um after the talk i approached then one of my favorite authors looking to get my copy of amatka signed and during my brief conversation with t beck i mentioned that i had read and loved everything she had published with the unfortunate addition <laughs> that i said that it wasn't too hard to do because they hadn't published very much and i was trying to give a compliment uh, I wanted to to tell her that, you know, I really loved her work and I want to read more of her. Uh, but as I realized, I realized as I said that, that the comment may not land very well. <laughs> and sure enough, that brought the conversation to a halt. Uh, and as I got home, this is what I found in my book. <clears throat> uh, so translated... Uh, from Swedish, it says, John, nice of you to come. I'm not Robert Jordan. <laughs> Signed, Colin T. Beck. So every time I open or even look at in myself uh, one of my all time favorite sci fi books, I cringe a little as I'm reminded of that time I managed to make a, a fool out of myself by accidentally, accidentally insulting one of the best authors in the genre. Thought it, best all authors in the genre. I can't speak today. Either. Anyway, um, a situation a bit like when Blistic manages to insult Tavor in the Bone Hunters, which will be the topic of my next video. Well, not to insult the Bone Hunters in general. Anyway, until then, find a mule, find a mule to kill. Then do yourself a favor and start reading Karin T. Beck. As I said, it won't take long, so the payoff in relation to the time invested is great. Uh, if she turns up in town again, I'll likely be in the audience. Um, I'll most certainly shut up. Speaking of shutting up, 